there's like a 75% chance the engine will not start on this thing. And uh, I've driven about two hours to come up here and fix, so here's hope. minutes. All right, we made it out in the water in the micro skiff and we're kind of snaking our way back to where we're going to be fishing. Today's video is sponsored by none other than Mystery Tackle Box. Now, if you don't know what Mystery Tackle Box is, it is a box full of goodies sent to your door every single month. It's a subscription service and they do fresh water and salt water boxes and a bunch of different types of boxes. And they send you a box of random lures to your door every single month. And uh, it's really cool, man. It really helps you find lures that you might not ever try and you kind of find out, holy crap, this bait is really good. I can't believe I've never used it or even discovered brand new baits. I'll have a link down below where you guys can sign up and save a bunch of money off on your first box and, and join up in the party. Mystery Tackle Box has been like my oldest sponsor and one of my oldest supporters so i really really appreciate everything that they do so you guys should go down below and check out a box and while we're fishing back in the uh hidden back countries today we're going to dig through the box and use a few lures that we got sent to us as well as some stuff that i brought with me but uh we are snaking our way into some uh, secret locations and hoping to catch some big giant snook and big redfish this morning and maybe even some tarpon but uh we got a little bit of a run and drive ahead of us and Got to make it solo in the micro skiff and get on them. This right here, what we're doing is the most redeeming quality about this micro skiff to me. To be completely honest, I've never really talked about it all that much. I gave like an honest review of it. When I first got it and the first video I ever did was where I kind of reviewed and talked about it and I didn't have a ton of time, so I don't want to make any like harsh assessments on it. This thing is an enormous amount of work <laughs> to use by yourself and to get into the water. With two people, it's not as bad, but it's still a ton of work. Now, I don't know how to say this without like, sound like I'm um, bragging about myself, but if I wasn't a stronger guy, it would be next to impossible to use the micro shift by myself. It is with the engine i think it weighs close to over 200 like with the engine and gear on it it weighs over like 220 pounds and you're manually moving this by yourself and the wheels are like semi helpful but maybe the least intuitive design thing i've ever used in my life but all that being said so far the places that's taken me the fish i've gotten to catch on it have very very much made up for the inconvenience that this thing is at times to use. If you had this on a trailer, it would actually be very, very easy to use. But the reason I haven't put it on a trailer is that I feel like the whole purpose of this thing is to be really adventurous and to take it places that no one else can get to. And sometimes you launch from a ramp and sometimes it's launching in the middle of a road where there's a mangrove hole that you can put the micro skip in. And so I like the ability to use this without a trailer because it allows like true, true adventure. All right, the engine is off. It is time for a uh, total stealth mode as we push our way back into this little lagoon here. I think you can see why uh, most boats might not make it back in here after watching my run into this place and uh, One of the really redeeming qualities about this skiff is what we're doing right now. Getting to places basically untouched. There's just heaps and heaps of bait in here right now. This is a good sign, very good sign. I'm gonna start out throwing a uh, biospawn exoswim right here because it's what I already had tied on. You can actually pick these up on Shop Carl's. I'll leave a link down in that below.
Look at this fish. Oh my gosh, tarpon. Nice. All right, hooked up with our first fish of the morning. I actually just downsized paddle tails from a four inch to like a two and a half, three inch. And second cast, a little eight, 10 pound tarpon right here. Been on the tarpon lately. Never mad about that, you know. Here he comes again. Nope, turn. Oh, there he goes, right there. <laughs> Honestly, not too disappointed that he jumped off right next to the boat. Very cool, good start right there, jump a tarpon. Let's uh, keep throwing, maybe we'll find a snook and a redfish as well. Or even a bigger tarpon, or actually land a tarpon. But he shredded up that leader right there, so we're gonna have to do a super quick retie here. That's gonna be money right there. Should be. <laughs> a little gold spoon. There's a red fish in there, we could probably find it on that. And just what I was looking for, jig heads. Sweet. I have no idea what that is. I'm trying to jack him good. Gosh, I think he's sprint. Is this a jack? Why would there be a jack in here? What is it? Oh, it's just a good freaking redfish. Holy crap. <laughs> that was insane. So I threw this fluke that I'm throwing and I was working across the top really, really fast, and I see something just come in hot, head waking on it. And I'm thinking to myself, dang, dude, like, that thing is coming in hot, and it eats and just starts running like mad and head shaking. I'm like, no way is there a freaking jack this far back in a river system. But lo and behold, it is about a 26 inch redfish. Maybe he may be bigger than 26 inches. That, my friends, right there is the type of fish that we're up in here putting the work in for on the micro skiff. Probably, I would guess, a 25, 26 inch redfish. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I don't get to catch a ton of these, so I'm always stoked when I do, man. What a beautiful guy that is. Oh my gosh. All right, that's not a bad first fish landed to kick it off. Jumped a nice size tarp and caught a good size red. Uh, maybe we can uh, whack a good snook and actually land a tarpon. Gosh, is this sick or what, man? Like, that is too freaking cool. Ooh, I just scared something big right when that landed. Maybe he'll just be reckless and whack it out of aggression. Ugh. Tarpon just rolled right in front of me. Oh, he just whacked it too. Dang, that was the one I just saw roll. Tarpon suck at eating. <laughs> he didn't get hooked, so maybe I'll throw it back up in there. He might still be kind of fired up. Like that, good night, son. He's just like wildly erratically slinging at it. Like he's, <laughs> he's just like full body blowing up on it. Let me turn it back here, bro. Oh, redfish, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That was so crazy. That was a redfish, clear as day. You can see his back pressed out of the water. 
but that wasn't what was swinging at me it's definitely a tarpon before there's just a lot happening up in here redfish on it there he is just saw his head come out of the water oh yeah baby <laughs> another good one hot damn oh. <laughs> god that is sick he just gave up real quick it's probably about two and a half three inches shorter than the other one but i saw him one i saw him pushing bait around and i threw up in there and i just see his little red noggin go steam line towards me Talk about a beautiful fish right there. I've never caught a redfish with this many spots before. Pretty cool, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on that side. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 spots across this whole entire fish. He's probably about like 20 inches, 19. Not quite as big as that first one, but man, is that sick or what? These are such cool fish. I don't get to touch, I don't catch them quite as often as I do snook and tarpon, so I freaking love getting these guys right here, man. They, snook and tarpon are always so like slow to release. Like you put them in, they kind of just kick and waddle around and sit there and wait to go off. Redfish, the second they touch the water, they're like, <laughs> Well. We're gonna make a few more casts here and there and probably have to start making our way back to the ramp. The wind has really picked up and it looks like there's a storm kind of brewing away from me. And this thing is like the last thing I want to get stuck in a storm in. So we're gonna make a few more casts here and uh, need to start making our way back. Cause it's gonna take us, you know, an hour to get, ooh, must get hit. it's gonna take us close to an hour to get back to the ramp, so. micro skiff i mean i'm always always stoked to catch some redfish you know i'm normally always tang with snook and jack and getting into anything different i'm always a big giant fan of it and those weren't too shabby of redfish obviously not monster ones but probably a 21 and a 26 and they were beautiful pristine looking fish exactly what you expect miles and miles deep in the back country and just untouched areas you expect fish to look perfect like that and so it's really cool to see those fish. The the micro skiff is a double-edged sword. It is insanely frustrating to use sometimes. It's insanely frustrating to load up and like pull it out and launch it and get the engine to turn over. Nothing about it is convenient, but where it gets to take you is very, very special and you get to fish in some areas that really no one else is getting to. And a lot of the areas I've been fishing in are places where you could get a paddleboard or a kayak in there, but it'd take you an hour and a half to paddle back there because it takes me 30 minutes to get there going 15 miles per hour. And so you really get into this like uncharted area of fishing that almost you think would be impossible in this day and age where everything's mapped out, but you're getting to go to places that no one else is getting to. I've talked <laughs> I've talked to a few people about it and they asked me about the micro skiff, like how I feel about it. And I probably have owned it, I don't know, for four or five months now. I can't even remember. And I feel allowed to have a fully developed opinion on now it is my favorite thing that i regret buying it's really cool but it's kind of expensive and i wish i would have maybe gotten a gnu or something a little more boat like it's not with the engine on it it's not really light enough to lug around by yourself unless you do what I did today where I backed my truck up into a boat ramp. It's tough to use, but 
you gotta gotta weigh the downsides of the upside. It's super cool. And like I said earlier in the video, if it was on a trailer, it would be the easiest thing to use. But if I was gonna put something on a trailer, I would get like a GNU or like a really small actual skiff, not like a paddleboard with an engine on it. But all in all, it's a really cool thing. And I definitely see that you guys love it. All the micro skiff videos I put up, I get such good positive feedback on them. And people are like, man, that thing is so weird and crazy and cool. And it is. But uh, just comes to the territory, I guess, that sometimes it's kind of a pain in the butt. Anyhow, good day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. That'll keep you up to date whenever I post a video. That's it for today. We're done. Until the next one, see you guys.